Good afternoon to you, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm. We are just west of Oxford, Ohio, right on that Ohio-Indiana line. Grass-fed Red Devon cattle, St. Croix sheep, and chickens, all within a rotational grazing system under five acres here, though we are on just under 60. I have a good word for you today. This comes from Joshua 8. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. Johnson Sioux bioreactors, Johnson Sioux compost. That's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Uh, I'll take you over here and show you what we got going today, on. I got the, the kiddos are hard at work here, uh, working on a new Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Uh, we'll go over what that is here, go over all the details here, but uh, basically we built one of these last year and that was last, I believe it was October, or no, November the 4th. Learned several, several things. That was our first time doing a Johnson Sioux. Uh, part of this video today, at the end, we're gonna tear that thing down and just see the uh, the goodness that we've got in there. Uh, this was our second one we built and um, I've got some other material in there now other than just uh, the leaves that you're supposed to use. This is gonna be our third one. We've got uh, late October here, we've got trees turning, uh, leaves are falling, and so we gotta get cracking here. So Dr. David Johnson and his wife developed the Johnson Sioux Bioreactor. I'm not gonna go into all the science uh, and the research, they've done testing, all that stuff. Just give you the basics here. I, I believe he set out, he had a, a grant to try and compost dairy uh, manure, I believe it was. Stumbled upon this method here. You know, anybody that makes compost knows the real uh, challenge is trying to keep that pile from going anaerobic, right? I mean, uh, and, and to do that, you have to you have to turn the pile, you have to keep the moisture right. You know, there's really uh, an art and a science to it, and uh, it can really turn into a lot of labor as well. The advantage to the Johnson Sioux and what, what Dr. David Johnson discovered is that you can set this up and you can, you can make what's called a, a static pile, which means it, it never needs turned. Uh, you can leave it there for a year. That's what we've done with, with ours back there. We'll be digging into that in just a minute. But you know, uh, that that is uh, incredibly useful to be able to uh, leave a pile, not have to turn it. You don't have that labor. The other thing is uh, the material. He discovered that the really the best material you can use, just simple leaves. Uh, the leaves that are falling here from our trees, uh, we collect those every year. We'd always just kind of dumped them on the garden and, and kind of piled them up, but again, you just pile up compost uh, it, when it starts to go anaerobic. Smell is just horrible. And they say, you know, also with Johnson Sioux, you're gonna make what's called a fungally dominant compost. Really, really awesome implications for, for uh, using this compost then and having a fungally dominated uh, soil. Ultimately, you don't want the bacterially uh, dominated stuff. That's when we get into the smells and going anaerobic and such. Uh, and so, you know, that's kind of the advantage. One of the things that excites me is I, I think we're seeing a shift in agriculture right now. Uh, you can look up uh, Jay Young uh, out in Kansas. Uh, the, the exciting things, thing about the Johnson Sioux is that uh, you can scale. Uh, you, you, you can make an extract off of the Johnson Sioux compost and that can be done at scale. Jay Young's doing this in his fields, eliminating a lot of his nitrogen. Uh, eliminating uh, phosphorus applications on his in a row crop application here. And so, you know, that's exciting stuff. Uh, more independence to the uh, small uh, farmstead here. I'm particularly interested in uh, how can this apply to improving uh, perennial pastures. You guys know, you know, my take on things has really evolved with the grazing. You know, I, I don't really view us as, as cattle or sheep farmers here anymore. I don't even view us as grass farmers. Uh, we, we are farming microbes, uh, really is, is what we're doing here. We're, we're uh, microbial stimulating that microbial activity and the, the plants now, it's been shown, are putting out root exudates, interacting, even taking in uh, that bacteria, those microbes, 
and uh, they're really plants are farming those microbes uh, and so the you know the better that our microbial uh, life is in the soil I do believe the better uh, gardens and pastures and uh, uh, fields that we're going to have. Let's let's uh, get over there and I want to show you how we're going to construct this third Johnson suit. What we've done here is I've put down four blocks, four concrete blocks, set a pallet on top of that, uh, and then we went over it with this wire mesh. We've cut out a hole in the center. And then Sam and the kids here and took the same three quarter inch wire and they made rolls of this, zip tied them together, and we're gonna make everything six foot, six foot high because that's what that landscaping fabric is, six foot rolls, we get to that stuff. Now they cut the bottom of this and you can see it's centered on the hole there. And then we're just gonna staple this guy. Now, this is not the way that a normal Johnson Sioux is built. This is our modification here, okay? And you know, what we're gonna be doing today actually is testing and taking that apart and seeing if our design worked. I have a feeling that it did, but on a normal Johnson Sioux, you're gonna pile all the material in here and then you have like, uh, you can look it up, probably half a dozen different, I think it's three or four inch pipes, PVC pipes that you stick in here as you build this thing. And then a week later, two weeks later, after the pile has settled, you take those out and you have those air columns then. I just, I didn't wanna have to mess with that. I just wanted to just build this, you know, something beforehand here to where it's done, where I can leave it. I'm not messing with stuff. This landscape fabric is gonna let air through and that's that's part of the static pile design. You don't want this thing going anaerobic. And the next step here is we have these boards here and uh, we did not do this on the Gen 1. I did not run those boards. And you can see when we, when we put this thing out to start out with, it was awesome. It looked great. Uh, you know, we made a couple mistakes on this. I did not keep the weeds down. And so that probably inhibited some airflow. And then over time, you can see this whole thing's like leaning, uh, you know, and the whole pile has just shifted down, downwind here. Uh, but you can see, woo, man, that's some, uh, that's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, doesn't really matter about looks to me right now, but uh, to keep that thing upright, we did on Gen 2, we did add these supports, just one, uh, and these are fence boards ripped down, but one support on each corner. And then I go around the top and we kind of, uh, uh, you know, attach our landscaping fabric to that. So next step is screwing these uh, supports on all four sides. Okay, so the supports are on. Here's one change we made from Gen 2 to Gen 3, adding these boards. I took these boards all the way down to the ground. You can see and went up you know, way above, the landscaping fabrics, fabric is six feet. I went up above that even. I think those are eight footers maybe. But I took them all the way to the ground and those are gonna have a tendency being wood uh, to soak up moisture, you know, when the ground gets wet. And so that's a change we're making here. Just bring your blocks out just a hair and let those supports just rest right on that, uh, uh, right on those blocks. The six foot roll is, I think it's in half there. It's just easier to work when it's halved. And then we're, we just pull that roll out, go around your bottom, and I'm only doing three sides here uh, to start out. Okay, putting up that six foot of plastic there, I think that's the toughest part of the whole uh, project. Putting that up, stapling that, then putting your boards up at the top, screwing those to the corner posts, and then you can see what you're left with here. We leave the front open. Now, when you get in on the inside here, you can see this gap so you can see the outside there so what i'm going to do is i cut these strips and i'm going to come in from the outside and screw those to the pallet kind of like we did on that other one there see how it's bulged out around and that's just going to hold the material and you got a lot of weight on the bottom there uh gen 3 here we got smart and we made two actually two doors that go on the front so we got the three sides done on the inside and then we're putting a small door here and the reason for that is because when we did that one there we had a ladder and we were hoisting all the material up over top dumping it through the top with this here i can stand obviously on the ground and fill it at least halfway full uh probably even a little bit more before i need to get up on the ladder the kiddos kind of came up with a little system here you, know, you got to soak these leaves to start out and kind of rinse them and so we uh, take everything sam's bringing them leaves back here from the mower we dump them they go into here 
keep this full of water. And then Sarah was kind of using this pitchfork here, kind of bring them up, let them drain, and then they go in the bucket. And then kiddos are uh, dumping here. You can see we're almost halfway. You know, one other thing too, I did end up adding this wire just around the base because you can see what's going to happen is that thing is going to start to push out and just having little bitty staples like I've done here those there's no way those are going to hold when that weight really starts pressing out I mean as is evidenced uh, over here with what happens over time in this thing sinking down here Okay, the weather has turned here. We're supposed to have our first night here below freezing uh, tonight, right about the end of October. Tomorrow's Halloween, and uh, we got this thing done. Uh, 30, 32 loads of wet leaves here. Okay, one note on this uh, new one that we built before we move over and take the old one apart. Uh, you're supposed to keep this thing watered uh, every day, and you can see we've made uh, just a little PVC uh, pipe water here. This is just, uh, I believe this is, uh, is this one inch. Uh, all you, all you want to do is just drill some holes in it. And, uh, that's just so the water gets dispersed evenly all the way around. We leave this thing on for, uh, I think it's maybe one minute every day. We got it on a timer. And so this gets watered every day. It's really important that, that it does not dry out. You also, you want to use water that is not chlorinated. So I know that can be kind of tough. Uh, for some folks in town. So we pull from our, our well uh, way back there and keep it in a tank up here. And then just, uh, they say not to let this pile freeze. Uh, I don't think ours freezes solid in the winter. It definitely gets cold. You know, I'm not putting this thing in a building and heating it. That's not an option for us. Uh, and then the, the last thing is, you know, watering every day. And then uh, you wanna put this, you wanna keep this over top. Okay, and you wanna keep it keep it covered that's going to keep that moisture in keep that heat in and uh you know we'll put something on here rocks or something but uh it's pretty much it okay the big moment here oh wow you see uh see worms on the outside already okay so the stuff on the outside looks a little it looks a little drier like it isn't as broken down but you get in here oh my Look at that. That's like a, yeah, that's like black chocolate cake. Exactly, exactly what you want. Let's uh, let's take this whole thing off. Stuff in the middle, oh my. Uh, wow, that's uh, looking, looking pretty good here. You can see uh, there's worms, worms throughout this. Getting, getting down uh, past the middle here. And I just wanted to dig down and show you, uh, we've got no, no smell, no, no bad smell. And uh, it does not appear like any of this uh, went anaerobic. Worms throughout here. Um, I did want to show one thing here. We got all the way down to the bottom here. There's the pallet you can see. Now I forgot on this first uh, Johnson suit we built, we put the landscape fabric on the bottom straight over the pallet. And uh, when I get down here, it's, it's not anaerobic, but uh, some of these leaves just have not, you can see those look like, you know, leaves that just haven't broken down. On this other design we did here, on our other ones, we're, we're laying that, this mesh here, the hardware cloth, but that will allow that air to come up, uh, you know, through underneath that pallet too. So I think that's gonna be uh, one improvement that we made there in, in Gen 2 and Gen 3. This stuff here down towards the bottom, I mean, it's just chock full of worms. Look at that huge, huge guy there. All right, so disadvantage to kind of having that lean to your pile is uh, we got towards the bottom here and the whole thing went Psh. But, uh, you know, looking at this stuff here, I mean, look at that. Just uh, pretty awesome chocolate cake-like. Uh, consistency this definitely could use a little bit more though like if we would take it out to the spring maybe go you know we're not quite 12 months yet uh if we would go out to 18 months i mean we really don't have a need for it here in the winter time so we could take it to to spring and uh you know it would be a lot more broken down uh you know we're going to run that through that continuous flow through uh, worm bend there 
So ours, uh, hopefully we have some stuff ready for spring. More uh, worm castings probably, but uh, one other note to make, uh, we did, we were pretty persistent about watering this through the late fall and uh, late winter, even in the, to, through spring actually we watered. But uh, because you gotta have that water that's not chlorinated makes it kind of difficult and uh, challenging. Uh, so there were times through the summer where, you know, because we'd have to go back to the windmill and pump to get that non-chlorinated water, we just wouldn't, it wouldn't get watered. And so I think if we were more, a little more diligent too about watering through the summer, that's when this stuff is breaking down. Gosh, look at that. Uh, so let's go over some numbers here. We ran 32 lawnmower loads of leaves over to uh, build this, this uh, third gen. There's 6.6 6 bushels of leaves in one uh, lawnmower load, 211 bushels of leaves uh, that went in to, to fill that guy right there as it stands right now. Uh, we weighed a bushel of leaves. It was about 23.7 pounds for one bushel of the wet leaves. 211 uh, bushel uh, times the 23.7. Uh, we're just under 5,000 pounds of wet leaves that uh, are in that thing there. And, you know, you look at this and, okay, well, how does that compare to what we have finished compost wise? Well, this was a little more than half of what we had started with. And so I think you could you could pretty conservatively say that you had a, a, a true ton. We didn't keep track pulling it out, but we had, you know, several uh, several loads, several wagon loads pulling this out. I think you, you could definitely say that you had 2,000 pounds worth of material. The Johnson Sioux microbial rich compost is selling for as much as uh, 25 bucks a pound right now. Uh, that does include shipping, uh, the, the price that I found online. I feel like this would need to be broken down more. So maybe giving it 18 months, you'd need to sift it. You'd need to have it tested so that you could show that you had a true fungally dominated compost that was full of uh, the good microbes. Uh, 25 bucks a pound at uh, 2,000 uh, pounds of, of compost. You, you know, that's 50 grand, uh, 50 grand a pallet here for... Uh, you know, just a bunch of leaves uh, that, that most people put out to the curb. So 50 grand for a pallet of compost, that's that's good. Uh, what What's even more valuable to me though is having living, healthy soil on this farm, uh, having, having consequently then having living enzymes and then healthy animals translates to healthy people. And a healthy family, only so much you can do with with paper money, especially as it's being devalued. Now, I'm, I'm not going there uh, today because I won't stop. Health, uh, health, that's that's what we're after here. We could send we could send tests in. We could try and quantify this with test regen ag lab. I've heard is a good one. Uh, we have ordered something called the microbiometer, okay? And I'm not necessarily, this is not a commercial for them. I'm not affiliated with them. I just thought it was interesting that we can we can test and we can get a fungal to bacterial ratio with this at home test kit, not have to send a sample off. You know, you send a sample off, you're, you're packaging it up. You you know, what about you know suffocating in the mail for several days uh, with no air? Uh, you know, all that kind of challenge there. Not to say that it, it wouldn't be somewhat accurate, but this microbiometer, uh, we're going to go in and uh, we put some of this uh, Johnson Sioux compost in the continuous flow through worm bin. Uh, let's do a test here and see what we come up with. Okay, our test results are in here. Uh, this is pretty exciting stuff to me anyway. Uh, we did three different tests. We tested yard dirt, which uh, I guess soil, I should say. That's just the, the, the yard here behind me. Uh, it's had no animals on it. It's just straight mowed. Uh, every year, no fertilizer, no nothing. Pasture was our second test. So I went out and we took a sample from my best paddock out in the rotational grazing system here and we, we tested that. And then the last uh, test here was the Johnson Sioux uh, compost, obviously that's uh, just, just now, uh, just yesterday, 12 months old. So let's go over these results here. Uh, with the yard dirt, we're, we're measuring uh, microbial uh, life, microbial population, and also the fungal to bacterial ratio. The yard dirt measured 134 on the microbial count. Fungal to bacterial ratio was a 0.1 to 1. So uh, a very, very low 
uh, fungal to bacterial ratio there. The next test paddock uh, number four out in the pasture, uh, the microbial life measured a uh, 272 fungal to bacterial ratio was a 0.5 to one. So uh, a little bit better than that, uh, that yard dirt, uh, yard soil there, but uh, still, you know, still pretty low. Uh, actually mid range. I think if we look at the, the, the microbiometer provides a, a chart here, uh, I'll just kind of throw that up. And so within the different measurements uh, depending on what you're measuring here they've got kind of a range and I, I do believe we were we were a little closer to mid-range on that uh, paddock number four for that test last test johnson sue uh the microbial and I'm, I'm really excited about this the microbial life and that johnson sue compost was a 940 and the fungal to bacterial ratio was a 1.9 to 1 so almost uh, twice as much uh, fungal activity uh, versus uh, bacterial. So we we were successful in that Johnson Sioux in making a fungal to bacterial uh, compost uh, with that uh, setup. Now, how does this compare to that expensive, uh, I shouldn't say expensive, to, to, to the $25 a pound uh, compost that would have put us right at the, the, the 50 grand mark for that uh, one, of the, one of our bioreactors? Well, uh, they actually, I went back and, and did some more reading and they let theirs sit in a bioreactor for 28 months. So again, we only did 12, uh, over twice as long as ours, but they came out with numbers over 6,000 on the microbial count and their fungal to bacterial ratio was a 4.26. Uh, pretty, pretty incredible. And you know what that's telling me is the longer that you can give this, the longer you can let it sit, the more valuable uh, it becomes. And so, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna call uh, their, their compost expensive because uh it's it's uh, you know i i think it's it's worth it uh you know how do you value that and that gets me into just the emerging market that's there for uh this kind of of compost again you know going back to what what dr david johnson has to say the fungal to bacterial ratio and the higher that is the higher the agricultural productivity that that they're going to see, that's proven. But that that's exciting stuff there, uh, and it's exciting uh, to be involved in this. Um, I think one of the the misconceptions, and, and you know, one of the ways that I kind of had to to redo my thinking with this compost, it's not a nutrient compost. This is not a nutrient compost. It's not an NPK thing. And so I think even calling it compost can be misleading. It, it's a it's a microbial compost or or an inoculant. And so, you know, if you take just worm castings, I mean, worm castings have been proven to give you, uh, what, 150% greater yields. Uh, there's, there's been studies done on that. Uh, worm castings are incredible. You know, we all know that. But if you take castings and you send those into a, a lab and have them analyzed for NPK, it, it's it'll come back virtually nothing. You know, there's virtually nothing there. And so I think, you know, this is starting to explain why that is right Be because it's your it's your life it's your microbial life in that soil and this goes back to you know what we learned this year and why i'm so interested in this is uh with with drought this year you know we saw we learned we went over this the the higher your organic matter is in the soil the more water holding capacity that you have for for every percent of organic matter you go up you go up, you are able to hold an additional 20,000 gallons of water per acre. That's huge. So the question becomes, how do you build soil organic matter? And, and this, this new research is now, now telling us it's, it's microbial life. It's the microbes that do the heavy lifting, that do the, the, the most of the building uh, uh, of the organic matter in the soil. It's not, it's not nutrient compost that you're putting on top. It's not even the manure. Uh, to me, those are just stimulants, and they're stimulating that that life in the soil, the microbial life. And so, you know, that's what interests me. You know, what can we do with this on perennial pasture? You know, I think, uh, you know, what excites me going forward is we, looking at these tests, we have room for improvement. And it's not like I have bad uh, ground here or bad pastures. Uh, you know, we uh, rotationally graze, and we're running two to three times the, the stocking rate of conventional uh, for my area and so we've got very productive pastures yet you know we see that test result come back with a, a, a 0.5 to 1 fungal to bacterial ratio 
and you know, a, a 272 on the, on the microbial life, I've got tons of room for improvement. That's what excites me. So, you know, I should be able to see even higher yields. What can we do with this stuff? How do we, how do we up that microbial life and, and the organic matter? Well, you know, I think we keep doing uh, diverse cover crop mixes here, but, but I think we, we start to integrate some, uh, some extract, you know, making some extract with this compost, uh, spraying that out and, and, and seeing if we can, we can stimulate that life uh, in the soil there to help us with that uh, organic matter. Building a, a half a percent uh, organic matter per year uh, is, is not out of the question. Uh, there's folks that are seeing that by stimulating the microbial life uh, in that soil. You know, I, I think the other interesting uh, thing to think about here is, you know, changing the conventional system. We can sit here and, and, and folks in the regenerative ag camp can, can criticize and critique the traditional NPK, you know, just throw nitrogen at it till you're blue in the face, do whatever you got to do uh, to, 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 you know, with, with NPK. And, and, you know, that really isn't productive. To, there's only uh, so much uh, criticism and critique that you can throw out there. Eventually, if you want to change a system, you have to find uh, a way to make the old system obsolete. And that's what excites me so much about this is, you know, this is a system that can be scaled. Uh, it is uh, lower input, yet higher yielding. I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, to really dig into this. There's an emerging market uh, here with this compost. Doesn't matter if you're in the, the city or wherever, you can do this. Uh, get your compost uh, get your compost going. And uh, you know, maybe you, you're doing this already. Maybe you've had some tests done, you've got some more information, uh, you know, leave it. I'll leave a, a link to, to one of Dr. David, David Johnson's lectures here. His approach is, is BEAM, Biologically Enhanced Agricultural Management. Uh, thanks for watching uh, today and we'll talk to you next time. Be blessed, take care.